everyone welcome to my live creative time today my name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney Australia it's great to have you with me today thank you all so much for being here let me just adjust this camera every time I move my chair I have to readjust my camera because sometimes I'm too close sometimes I'm too far now let me just while everybody is finding me and jumping on let me just bring this up on my iPad and my computer and I just remembered I forgot to wipe my ointment from my eye <laughs> I have another eye infection um, this time in the other eye so let me just do that I meant to do that before I went live sorry about that <laughs> I have one shiny eye and one not shiny eye all right so let me just bring this up on all my devices okie dokie so as you're jumping on say hi let me know that you're here and if you're watching on the replay later thank you so much it's great to have you here watching the replay um, or you might be watching this on YouTube later on as well thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel alrighty so just bringing this up on my iPad so I always like to bring it up on my iPad and on my computer because sometimes I see the comments on one and sometimes on the other it just depends on the day what is happening because Facebook is always updating things all the time so it's hard to keep up with what's working where <laughs> so sorry just pop that up there hey Kimberly how you going great to have you here today all right so let me find this over on my computer so I've got it up on the iPad and the thing with the iPad is that the um, comments pop up and then they go away so it's always hard to keep track and keep up to date on where I'm where I'm at with comments so that's why I bring it up on my computer as well so we'll just do that and of course I can't do that till I go live so it's always a process when I first jump on so hopefully you'll you bear with me while I just get this all happening there we go all right and let's make sure that's on mute no there we go all right awesome great how is it over in Minnesota today Kimberly you just got back from retreat with your friend oh, oh with Navon oh lovely oh that's so cool so what did you make on your retreat I'm assuming that it was a crafting retreat so what did you make let me know I'd love to hear about it very exciting I love a good retreat I um, did a retreat uh, I attended a retreat um, a few weeks ago which was really really lovely and I it was the first one I've attended in oh gosh I don't even know how long because usually I'm the one putting on the events I don't often attend get to attend them so it was really exciting and um, we made lots and lots of projects one of which I posted on the weekend actually I still haven't posted all of them yet um, I've still got one to finish actually the big one I've still got to finish the big project I didn't get it finished so I will uh, get to that when I when I can <laughs> in my spare time <laughs> oh it's cold wet and rainy there is it oh yucky we did have a little bit of that the last few days actually here too um, but today's a beautiful day today's been really lovely and sunny um, uh, a little bit warm up because we're heading into so what are we now summer autumn we're in autumn so we're the opposite season I think to you Kimberly um, so we're heading into the cooler months now heading into um, winter soon so winter will hit us or oh, the cold weather usually hits around May and then by June July it's freezing so because winter starts in um, June here uh, oh, you did a couple of paper pumpkin kits. Awesome. And an easel ca calendar. Oh, lovely. So exciting. Hey, Dimity. Great that you found me. Thanks so much for being here. It's good to have you. Um, oh, it feels like fall there, which is our autumn. Yeah, you call it fall. We call it autumn. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what we're having. Well, what we did have over the last few days as well. We've just got a little bit of uh, sunshine and warmth today, and then it's going to get cold apparently later in the week. So, yes, we're we're on the downward the downward slope. <laughs> hey, Megan, great to have you here. How are you today? 
So, Kimberly and Navon, Navon's not here just yet today. Sometimes she's able to join us, sometimes she's not. Um, but uh, they've just come back from a retreat, which is awesome, a crafting retreat. So what's everybody else been up to over the weekend? Let me know. Um, oh, Dimity said it's stinking hot and humid in Darwin. Oh, yuck. <laughs> yeah, up north in, um, so Kimberley, where, I don't know if you've been to Australia before, but Darwin is um, a long, long way away from Sydney and it's not on the coast, I don't think. No, it's inland, isn't that right? Northern Territory? Yes, I think I've got that right. <laughs> oh, I actually haven't been. I haven't been to Darwin, haven't been to Northern Territory. Um, the furthest I've been is Townsville in Queensland, which is on the coast. So I've kind of been on the coast and inland Victoria. I've been over to South Australia, Western Australia. Northern Territory is the one place I haven't been. So one of these days, I hope to get there. Oh, you haven't? Haven't been to Australia? Okay, so um, Dimity, can you explain to Kimberly where Darwin is situated? Please. <laughs> I should have added please at the end of that sentence. That would have been politer. Um, uh, oh, you are on the coast. Okay, so Darwin is on the coast and the best fishing. There you go. Um... So it's, yeah, so Darwin in Australia is right up the top and um, a long, long way away from Sydney because we're on the coast sort of, um, not down the bottom, but towards the probably two thirds of the way down the east coast of Australia. Um, yeah, so, oh, there you go. So Dimity is on the coast. Okay. So Darwin is, oh, I really need to look at my Australian map. Isn't that terrible? I live here in Australia and I don't even know exactly where Darwin is on the map. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> See, because I haven't been there. I haven't even been to Cairns yet. I want to go to Cairns, which is um, northern Queensland. My husband's been there many years ago before we met, but I've never been there. Um, but Darwin is in Northern Territory. So there we go. Oh, it is in, oh, I keep on thinking Darwin. Okay, so Darwin is in Australia, uh, is in Queensland. I keep thinking it's in Northern Territory. Why am I thinking it's in Northern Territory? So it's the north top of Australia, west left of Queensland. Oh yeah, so it is Northern Territory, right? Oh my goodness, I'm getting so confused. <laughs> Oh, the furthest that Kimberly has traveled is London and Hawaii. I love Hawaii, especially Maui. Maui is the best. So beautiful in Maui. Love Maui. Okay, there we go. So, oh, Judy's here too. Hi, Judy. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Yes, so Darwin is Northern Territory. I was correct. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I was so sure it was in Northern Territory. And then when I just read um, Dimity's comment, I'm getting confused. So yes, it is Northern Territory. Very northern, middle of Australia. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I have got that right. So the coast part would be the top part, I guess, of, um, of yeah, where Dimity's saying the coast is the top part, the top of the, the coast. So that's the northern part, the northern coast of Australia. Oh, my goodness, geography. Can you tell I wasn't good in geography at school? <laughs> oh, still not very good at geography. <laughs> uh yeah okay awesome very good hey kathleen how are you going testing my uh geography skills which are not very good <laughs> oh it's good to have you with us kathleen how was your weekend and how was your weekend too judy um oh best barra fishing nice good old barramundi i love eating a bit of barramundi very yummy 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 fish um, oh, <laughs> Megan says, Megan says, I'm not going on a road trip with you, Mandy. No, no, don't. <laughs> Even with a GPS, I get lost. So I need to know where I'm going. Google Maps is my friend. So I check it all out on Google Maps first. And then from Google Maps, 
I print out the map and then I'm good to go. But GPSs, they always steer me wrong. Well, the one that's in our car steers me wrong, but then again, the maps aren't up to, up to date. So, but it always wants to take me on the longest route or a different route, or I don't know. I think my husband's changed the settings as well on our GPS. So it does no tolls. I don't do no tolls. I do tolls. Thank you. <laughs> it's quicker and more direct. <laughs> I don't care about the money. <laughs> oh, hey, Helen, how are you going? Oh, so funny. So funny. Um, oh, wait, did somebody just ask something about Crocs? I missed that comment. Uh, oh, yeah, Ms. Middle. Oh, Judy said Middle Northern Coast with Crocs in the water. Oh, yes, that's right. There's crocodiles up there. Yes. So you don't go, <laughs> don't go in the water up there. <laughs> oh, Australia is actually a bit of a dangerous country of all of our, all of our dangerous critters, snakes and deadly snakes and spiders and um yeah crocodiles <laughs> you've got to come with all the knowledge when you come here Kimberly okay so when you come to travel to Australia it's a beautiful country you've just got to got to know where you're going and the about the dangers and because you know there's sharks in the water too and things like that so <laughs> that's all good uh I have to say, I've never been bitten by a deadly snake or a deadly spider, so none of our household have. So there you go. The worst I've had is a bee sting, um, which that can happen anywhere in the world. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> it sounds scary, but it's really not that bad. Making it sound really, really terrible. It's not. It's a beautiful country. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, Amanda, how you going? Oh, so funny. You'll have to replay the uh, the beginning bit that you missed. Uh, with my terrible geography skills <laughs> of my own country. <laughs> oh, Judy said, my nav man has me in different suburbs in Sydney to where I actually am. Yes, mine does that too. I get totally lost. I remember once, um, oh, years ago, I think I had my mum in the car and the girls were young and we were going to, we had a different type of GPS back then, but still we were using GPS. And we were going to a dancing competition, which the girls did um, what is called fizzy or physical culture. It's a combination of different types of dance. We're going to a competition and it was at um, Castle Hill or Cherry Brook or somewhere over there. Totally, totally lost. Could not follow this silly map to this GPS to let us know where um, it was. And had to pull over and ring my husband on the phone who wasn't with us to look it up to give us directions over the phone because <laughs> the GPS was no help. Ah, oh, so yes, yeah, so you've got to be you you've got to have a good GPS <laughs> or a map. Google Maps. Google Maps is good. Ah, <laughs> oh, so funny, so funny. Yeah. So London, Kimberly, I would love to go to London. Our son did a European um, trip a few years ago and went to London and um, I was following him on my treadmill because my treadmill has maps on it and you can do like a walk on your treadmill and it has like the full on map and street view and everything as you're walking so you can program in your route. So I programmed in like where his hotel was and stuff like that. So I was walking up and down the street and doing little circuits around all the places he went in um, and that was more accurate than my GPS in the car. <laughs> And um, yeah, so I was walking around on my treadmill, looking on the map and on the street view of all the places he was going. It was so cool. It was like I was there with him. It was really awesome. Um, yeah, I have to get back to my treadmill too. Remind me, I need to do that. <laughs> at the moment, I'm still recovering from my, um, my back injury at the beginning of the year. So I'm still not actually able to walk very far um, or stand up for too long. So sitting and laying down is mostly what I do. I um, did a little bit of walking, not much, but I had to go to office works and then I came home and then I went back out to pick up my daughter and had to go to Services New South Wales to fix up um, some documentation and stuff. And that's all I did. And I didn't even walk far or anything. Like I was parked right near both places and my back that night and the next day was cactus again. So it's like, I can't. Yeah, anyway, very frustrating. And that's only 10 minutes from, like, I only drove 10 minutes from home. And that's the furthest I can sort of deal with at the moment. So we'll get there. We'll get there, won't we? 
Um, Got to just keep moving on. Hey, keep moving. Keep looking forward. Um, all right, so I'm just scrolling through comments. If you see me looking over to the side, it's because I'm looking at my computer screen over there. Um, I moved it from off the bed. I had it over on the bed last time and that was, that was not good. So I've got a little bit closer to me now. Um, all right, so I am just scrolling, scrolling. What? Dimity said we can keep crocs at pe as pets. Are you serious? Is that true? You can keep crocs as pets. Oh my God, why would you do that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Judy did some face painting over the weekend. Yay, that's so exciting. Always lots of fun. Very good. Um, oh, so Kathleen said she had a great weekend, but netball Saturday and Sunday. Oh, wow. Okay, so busy, busy times with the kids. How did they go? Did they have did they have some wins or um, are they in are they in competition? I guess each week is competition, isn't it? To then get through to the finals, is that how it works? Um, I haven't played netball since I was a little kid, so oh, actually, I tell a lie. I played a little bit in high school, um, but I played competition when I was a child. Was never very good, so not not really the athletic type. I'm the the horse riding, roller skating, ice skating girl. Um, water skiing which none of those I can do anymore either because of my back but yeah other sports not so good <laughs> I leave all that to my other siblings who were uh, my one of my other sisters is actually very sporty was very sporty um, all right so I'm scrolling back through speaking of sharks oh Megan said speaking of sharks do you have shark nets down there yes I believe so um, I tend to stay out of the surf, uh, beaches and walking on sand and things like that are no good for my back these days anyway. So, and I'm a bit scared of sharks and, um, the ocean in general, cause I've been dumped badly a few times. So, um, dragged out by rips and all sorts of things. So <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really go. I love sitting by the ocean, watching the ocean, watching the power of the waves, listening to the ocean. I found, find that very relaxing and I don't mind paddling along the edges, um, but I don't really go in this, which is funny because I grew up going to the beach, but nowadays, yeah, not so much. So, um, but yes, I do believe that there are shark nets at most of the beaches down here, um, but you know, they get holes in them and things like that. So I don't, I don't trust them. <laughs> Uh, Judy says, Kimberly, I'm 71, lived in the cities and never seen any of those deadly things unless at the zoo. But redback spiders like dark places, yes. Uh, never leave your shoes outside. They love to nest inside shoes, yes. But with redback spiders, they can make you very, very sick. Um, but so long as you get medical treatment, you're usually fine. So it's the funnel webs that you've got to worry about. They're the deadly ones, the really deadly ones. Um... Oh, you want one of those treadmills, Judy? Yeah, they're really awesome. It's so cool. I actually haven't been on mine for quite some time because of my back. Um, I haven't been able to walk so very well. So, um, but yeah, it's it's really cool. And you can, it can actually, like you can get it to program a route in, like you can say where you want to go and it can program a route. But I like to program my own route on the treadmill because then I can activate my own speed. Because if you choose one of their pre-settings, It'll choose the speed and the um, the incline as well, and I can't do incline either. So um, sometimes you'll start out really nice with a leisurely stroll if you're doing one of the pre-programmed ones, and then it'll start to incline and it'll show you that you're walking up this beautiful hill or this mountain. I did one in Japan once, um, so it was showing me that I was walking up this mountain in Japan. Oh my goodness, I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> was so steep and such a hard walk um, and then it ramps up the pace the speed so yeah I like the ones I just program the ones myself that I want to do <laughs> and sometimes I just do laps I just do ordinary laps around an oval and um, and that's good too when I just do want to do like a short walk a short easy walk um, yeah, it's lots of fun to play around with, but you, you really can. Oh, and it's got an iPad, um, holder as well. So you can put your iPad on there and listen to music as well, or, or your iPhone and, 
um, or you can do stuff on your iPad or listen to um, watch videos or whatever while you're I've done all of that too yeah it's lots of fun it's lots of fun um, uh, Kimberly was responding to Judy she said ah I'm 61 and suburb of US Twin Cities uh, Minnesota ah, there you go I love it when you chat with each other it's so fantastic yeah oh so Dimity said yes they can they can they are actually allowed to keep crocodiles as pets interesting I don't tell my kids that one <laughs> that's <laughs> oh I don't think I'd be doing that though like what do you do when they grow big and they get vicious then what do you do where do you keep them you'd need like a big swimming pool a saltwater swimming pool or something for them <laughs> Kimberly says no crocs for me <laughs> no Oh, Kathleen, your girls won at um, netball. Congratulations to them. Well done. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, so she says netball comp. Um, please. She's, she plays rep. Oh, she plays rep netball as well. Wow. So busy, busy netball family. Oh, that's cool. Very good. Um, people he, who keep crocs are like people who keep snakes, spiders and rats, crazy people. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be keeping any of them either. However, I did used to keep mice when I was um, young and a teenager. Um, yeah, I did have mice and at one stage my, my brother also had mice and we bred them. But um, I wouldn't be doing that nowadays. They're very smelly and they're not very nice to each other and they don't live for very long either so and now the only mice we have are the wild mice the bush mice that come in from the bush because we've got bush not so far away not so far away and then every so often we get mice in the house and i hate that because they're ugh, ugh, ugh. yeah i don't catch those ones i don't touch those ones. <laughs> yucky 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 yeah so no i don't, won't, won't do any of that anymore i'll stick to my puppy dog and uh yeah I'm a bit of a bit of a city girl, a bit of a city girl. So I like, although I don't like the busyness of the city, I like the suburbs where it's a little bit quieter. <laughs> so fun. Stick to the ocean pools. Oh yeah, true. Then you got to be careful of blue ring octopuses, Judy. <laughs> that's that's something else, Kimberly. We've got deadly octopus here too. Box jellyfish and irukandji up north and blue ring octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making Australia sound really attractive, aren't I? <laughs> oh, I think every country you go to has their, you know, their scary and deadly creatures. So I think wherever you go, so long as you go armed with all the information, you know what to look out for, you know the places to um, that are safe and aren't safe and things like that, you know, I think you're fine. I think it's everywhere around the world. Um, it's just funny. I think because of the um, the crocodile hunter um, who went global, you know, Steve Irwin, years ago, I think that um, Australian wildlife became a lot more widely known around the world. I think, um, yeah, I think he um, really put a lot, and the whole Irwin family, I think, to just, um, yeah, put Australia on the map in terms of all of our beautiful creatures, because then we've got our beautiful koalas and wombats, and we've got the emus, and um, what else do we have that's Australian? Beautiful cockatoos. Oh, we had, so black cockatoos are fairly rare. The white cockatoos we have everywhere in Australia. They're, they're just everywhere. And sometimes they can be a bit of a pest too because they chew things, they chew your, they chew wood, they chew verandas and all sorts of things, railings and, but they're beautiful birds They and they can be well trained too as pets. However, the black cockatoos are um, a little bit more rare, but we have some that nest here. And I don't know if the black cockatoos might be endangered. Um, correct me, anyone who might be on, let me know if... Um, yeah, about the black cockatoos if you have information about them. But um, we have some black cockatoos that nest in the bush just near our house. And yesterday, they actually came down to my neighbor's um, bottle brush tree. And they were, there was, the girls were out the front. One of my daughters was washing her car. The other one went to take the puppy outside. And the puppy saw these big black cockatoos and one of, and just freaked out and was just, and she was really, really scared. 
and um, one of them went to fly and the girl said its wingspan was enormous and so there was this big black thing flying and it freaked her out, freaked out my girls too, I have to say. And um, the girl said no wonder she was scared of them because they, they're very big, they're almost as big as her actually, yeah, they're probably almost as big as Callie and um, when they fly and they expand their wings out, they look bigger and they look big and scary. So yeah, poor little thing. She got such a big fright and then they tried to take her out a little bit, a little bit later and they were still there. We've never had them that close to our home. Like they were right between our, our front yard and our neighbor's front yard in the bottle brush tree there. So that was pretty cool, but I was um, busy at the time and I couldn't go out to have a look at them. So um, yeah. Uh, I'm just scrolling back through the, um, we better get onto some crafting. We're having a lovely chat this morning. Oh, well, this afternoon, I should say, not this morning. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Oh, uh, Judy said Brooke might like that, marine animals. Um, stick to ocean pools. Um, do you mean the crocs? She wouldn't like the crocs, no. <laughs> ocean pools, maybe, yes. Um, but not crocodiles, no. <laughs> Kimberly said no mice, no, no. <laughs> oh, Megan just Googled it, Googled it. You need a wildlife permit to keep a crocodile. Oh, okay, there you go. So they can keep them, but they need a wildlife permit. Ah, there you go. So funny, yeah. Um, Megan said, I saw a double-headed snake in the zoo at San Diego. That was scary. Oh my goodness, really? That's crazy. Was it a real one? That's crazy. I've never seen that. Wow. Um, Dimity said, normally when, normally when a meter, you hand them back. Oh, okay. When they get grow to a meter, you hand them back. A couple of people have large ponds with high wire fences and large crocs. A baby croc can take your fingers off. I don't have one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be having any size croc. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, um so oh cat's here. Hey cat, I didn't see you jump on. Great to have you here. Um just reading where did I just see that? Um cat said the black cockatoos are protected and not allowed to have them within without a license and you can be fined over 30,000 for keeping them. Yeah, because I think because of the black, the black cockatoos, the ones that are around here, they live in the bushland just um, near our place. And I think, um, as uh, Kat said, the black cockatoos are protected because I think they're on, they might be on the, are they on the endangered species list or the, um, what's the other one called? Is it endangered species or where there's not many of them left? There's another term. I can't think of the other term. Yeah. Uh, oh, Judy said, yes, we have three species of black cockatoos, two endangered and one vulnerable. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, because I think there's the one with the black under its tail, the one with the yellow under its tail. And I don't know of the third one. So, yeah. Um, oh, Judy said with the, the double-headed snake, it would be like conjoined twins. Yeah, not fully formed. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Um, Megan said about the black cockatoos, yes, uh, it's due to loss of habitat. Yeah, yeah, which is sad. I know, so um, here in my estate where we live, we had a lot of bush around us, which was lovely, but of course we had more snakes and spiders then too, which wasn't so lovely. Um, but we, a lot of that's been built out now and we only have a small amount of bush um, on our estate. And then at the very bottom of our estate, there's a little bit of bush that then goes down to the um, the creek, the creek, the South Creek, which always floods when it rains, which isn't too near our house, so that's okay. Um, we're not in any danger here of flooding, but um, yeah, that creek does flood quite a lot. But um, yeah, so it's really sad. We used to have a lot of kangaroos as well on our estate, even like right across the road from us when we first built here. Um, it was vacant lots and we'd have the kangaroos come down our street and actually sit on that vacant lot over there. But we don't really see the kangaroos um, down here anymore. They've sort of been pushed out, I think, a little bit by, 
I suspect there might be a couple still down in the bushland, but I think they pretty much hide down there because every so often somebody in the local community on the local community group will post that they saw the, a couple of kangaroos on the road, like on, on the actual road where you're coming into the estate. So they must still be around, but not as many as what we used to have. So it's very sad. Yeah. Love our kangaroos. Kangaroos and koalas. Yeah. Two beautiful creatures. So anyway, um, and people pinch the eggs and try to smuggle them out of Australia. Oh, of the black cock. Oh, wait, of the black cockatoos or of the crocodiles are we now talking? I've been talking about both. So now I'm getting confused. <laughs> um, show me what you're making because I'm going to have to get out of bed and go to Bible study group. Um, it's Italian dinner tonight. Oh, nice. Guess who's cooking? Ah, you cooking some Italian, Judy. Yum, yum. Yes, we need to get on to crafting because we have been chatting for ages. And it's lovely to chat with you all. And I would love to keep chatting about, we can keep chatting while we're crafting. So, but let me just um, tell you about a couple of things and then I'll show you what we're going to be making. So, first of all, oh, I've got so much exciting news. All right, so let's get on to some news. Tomorrow, guess what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is the launch of our brand new catalogue. I went and got mine spiral bound the other day, as I mentioned at the beginning. Let me just turn this over. I'll take, I just, I keep a um, clear plastic cover on the front of my copy to keep it nice, but um, it reflects the lights really badly. But so, yeah, so they don't come spiral bound. I went and got that done at my local um, stationery store. And then I have a clear front cover put on the front and the back. But anyway, our brand new catalogue is launching tomorrow, the 3rd of May, 2022, which is super exciting. So, so many beautiful products in here, all available from tomorrow. Um, there might just be a few that might get held up in shipping. We're just waiting to hear. We'll get a list, an up-to-date list um, tomorrow. I do know that the new um, magnetic platform for the Stamp and Cut and Boss machine that I mentioned last week, that we just got notified today that that is held up in shipping. So um, it's coming, but it won't be available tomorrow unless it arrives sometime today or overnight. Um, but they're not expecting it to be available tomorrow, but um, it should be here very soon. Um, so, yeah, and from tomorrow, I'll actually be able to show you the inside of the cover, uh, inside the catalogue, not just the front cover, which is super exciting. So if you don't already have one of these beautiful catalogues and you would like one and you don't already have a, a demonstrator here in Australia, please get in contact with me and let me know because I would love to send you one. So send me um, either an email or or you can send me um, a private message. You'll see a message button at the top of my Facebook page here where you're watching this video. And I'd love to get you one of those brand new catalogs because it's super, super exciting. Now, the other thing is, another thing that's very, very exciting that's starting tomorrow is we have got a very, well, we, as in Stampin' Up, has a very special joining offer, which is amazing. This is one of the best offers I have seen in a really, really long time. Um, so when you purchase your starter kit to become part of the Stampin' Up family, um, you it's still the same price. So $169, you still get to choose whatever you like up to the value of $235 to put into your starter kit. So you're already getting $66 worth of product for free, plus you'll get free shipping, plus you'll get ongoing 20% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products, plus on top of that, you're going to get $116.50 for free worth of in-color products, which is super exciting. So you're going to get... Let me show you. I was trying to get it all organized before I went live. You're going to get all five of the ink pads. So we've got um, well, these ones. I haven't put these in order, in color order. We've got um, Tahitian Tide and we've got Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky. So you get all five of those. Then you'll also get... You get a pack of in color grid paper. I've got a little flyer here, but it's really hard to, the photos are so small on there. You get a pack of in color grid paper. Now I'm not sure how many sheets are in that one. They haven't actually told us that, but we will find out tomorrow because um, they're going to be available for purchase as well. But I'm assuming that there'll be 
um, the sheets will be available in all the colors and they'll come in like a, a pack um, you'll get a pack of a4 cardstock in all of the colors so you get the assorted pack here we go I'm trying to spread out all the colors there we go so you get a pack of those and you get where's my little here it is you get 20 sheets in the assortment pack of cardstock so you're going to get four sheets of each of the five colors so you get the ink pads you get the cardstock you get the grid paper and you're going to get a pack of the designer series paper as well whoops which i was just fiddling with now this isn't a whole pack but just to show you uh, sorry i had these out and i was fiddling with them so this isn't a complete pack but you will get a complete pack of these as well which is 40 sheets of the designer series paper in the in colors so you get four each of two double-sided designs in each of the five colors so a total of um, 40 40 sheets so you get that you get that and remember these are going to be full packs not just the few that I'm holding up and you're going to get all of these this is so hard to hold all of this there's so much product you get all of these plus you get the grid paper so it's valued at $116.50 and if you join between the 3rd and the 31st of May you'll get all of that added to your starter kit absolutely free so isn't that amazing? That will give you so much product to play with and all those beautiful new in colors. Um, it's super exciting. So I sent out an email um, on the weekend or was it Friday? It might have been Friday or on the weekend um, about the in color um, joining offer, the starter kit offer. So if you're not part of my um, newsletter list yet, um, make sure that you subscribe to my newsletter. So if you go to my blog, there is a button there where you can subscribe to my newsletter. You'll see it at the top of my blog homepage when you go to my blog. So go to Mandy's Papercraft Creations .com, com and click on the um, subscribe to my newsletter button and um, you'll just fill in your details there with your email address and everything and then I'll be able to send you my emails and my newsletters and keep you up to date with everything. But yes, I sent that one out the other day. And all my customers, my regular customers who have um, received their catalogs, um, you've got one of these coming to you in the mail as well as some other information. So um, that's coming to you too. So look out for that. Um, now, to let you know, if you are joining my team, I don't want you to be worried that you're going to be pressured to sell or pressured to build a team of your own or anything like that. You don't have to. I give the same information to everybody it's up to you what you do with that information but you can simply join just for the enjoyment for the creativity for the friendship for the discount um, we have a great time together we gather together every month for those that can join us or that would like to join us I update everybody um, with the latest Stampin' Up! news we do some team recognitions I give prizes we have a fun creative challenge every month and actually next month no this month May we're doing a team card swap for so those that would like to participate so that's always exciting so we swap cards um, and with others in the team and we get lots of great ideas and inspiration uh, so so much good things and then we get access to new product early new catalogs early so we, we get all the insights we get all we get all the goss before everybody else um, as demonstrators we get we get the lowdown on everything first before everybody else gets to find out. So it's pretty, pretty fun and exciting. So if that sounds fantastic to you and you would like more information, feel free to get in contact with me. Or if you've already made the decision and think, yep, I'm going to join. That sounds like an unbeatable offer that I can't pass up and I want all of that. You can go to my blog and at the top of my blog, there's a button to join. You'll see it. It's next to the shop button. It says join and you can click on that and it'll walk you through the process. The, the process has been simplified, so it's much easier now as well. And all of those um, free products, the in color products are going to be added to your starter kit for absolutely free. So just have a list of the products that you want to the value of $235 and um, yeah, 
and that is going to be available from tomorrow from the 3rd of May until the 31st of May that special joining offer so super exciting now if you're not interested in joining then that's okay too but I do have an in color club so if you still want to get all of the in color products um, and um, you can get them over the period of five months so just little increments um, it's a more affordable way to do it as well if you are not planning to join but you would just like to purchase the products then that's okay you will pay full price though you won't get that 20% discount that demonstrators get um, but I do have an in color club so what I'm going to do is um, after I finish filming this video I'll add the link to this club um, with this video so that if you would like to have a look at that you can click on the link and you can read all of the information to see what you get in the club um, but basically you'll get a collection of the in color products over the five month period it will be spread out over the five month period and each month there'll be a different color collection so one month will be starry sky one month will be orchid oasis etc etc so um, I actually have a brochure and this is another brochure that went out to my lovely customers my um, customers who have received catalogs from me um, this flyer has gone out as well to show you all of the new in color products so that you know exactly what there is so these are some of the products that are going to be in the um, the join uh, sorry the in color club my in color club that runs over the five months so most of those products i'm just not including the stamp and write markers i think and the um the cards and envelopes the tea boutique cards and envelopes i'm not including those ones um and i think i didn't include the stamp and write markers just to keep the price down a little bit for everybody and but the ink the ink pads the ink refills the stamp and blends the um designer series paper the card stock the ribbons there's two different types of ribbons so we're including the baker's twine in the um club not the other not the other metallic ribbon oh and also of course gotta have bling so we're including the bling here it is we're including these as well we're including a selection of those as well in the um club so anyway check that out i'll put the link up um after this video and the other thing I was going to tell you is I am running a paper share. So with all of um, the new catalogs, we get lots and lots of designer series papers. And I think this time we've got 12 from memory. Wait, let me just check how many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, 12. And I'm running a paper share. So I still have some um, spots available for my paper share. But this is actually going to be closing on the 6th. Yes, 6th of May. So that is Friday. My paper share is closing on Friday. So again, I'll put the link with this video. If you would like to get um, a sampling, you'll get a quarter pack of each of those papers that are listed here. Um, um, I'll put the link there. You can go through again, read all of the information. And if you would like to participate in the um, paper share as well and get a sampling of all of those beautiful designer series papers, then um, do that before Friday. Otherwise, you're going to miss out. All right, today, bling, bling, bling. Yes, Judy, we love our bling. Yes, and you know what else we love? We love anything that sparkles. So one of the new, um, where is it now? Where did I put it? Ah, one of the new rib ribbons that um, Stampin' Up! has in the ink color range is a metallic ribbon, and it's sparkly. It's so pretty. So at the moment, I only have the, which color did I get? Orchid Oasis, but I've just ordered the sweet sorbet as well so that's coming that'll probably arrive next week oh no it might arrive this week actually so it's super blingy and it's beautiful um but it comes in all the colors as well so that's also available i haven't included that in the in color club because um it was going to just bump the price up and i wanted to keep it affordable for everybody but those ribbons can be purchased um separately as well so yeah Alrighty, so let's get on to some projects. Oh, last thing. Today is the last day for the last chance products from the current annual catalogue. The current annual catalogue is retiring today. Today's the last day, the 2nd of May. So if there was anything from 
that catalog that you still wanted that's not carrying over into the new catalog or perhaps you wanted some of the bundles that are carrying over but not carrying over together as a bundle get them now and save yourself 10% um, because today's the last day to grab those last chance products that are retiring or that the bundles are being split up into individual items so check that out and the other last thing the waves of the ocean promotion this ends today as well the 2nd of May so the stamp set and dies are carrying over into the new catalog but the papers those beautiful papers the foil sheets and the beautiful bling they are not carrying over so today is the last day to get your hands on those so if you haven't seen them i've shown them on videos um, and we've created with them on videos so if you haven't seen them check it out on my youtube channel um, there's a video there we're using those beautiful products uh, oh, quite a few weeks ago now um, yeah so check them out the last day today all righty we of course are going to be playing with more in color today because we're talking about in color and we're talking about the joining offer and my in color club um, so lots of different ways you can get your hands on those beautiful in color products but why not get them for free you're only going to pay 169 dollars to join and you're going to get 235 dollars worth of product that you get to choose plus you'll get another 116 dollars worth of 116.50 worth of in color products for free so just do it just join and i forgot to mention too that um if you decide that it's not for you after joining that's fine you can just go back to being a customer okay so there's no lock-in period you don't have to stay for any particular period or anything like that um oh amber said the ribbons are in the in color club i thought amber's just popped that up i thought we only had the baker's twine hang on let me check She's correcting me here. Hang on a sec. I might have told you the wrong thing. Let me see. All right. So in my In Color Club every month you will re receive. Um, so we're going to have a color of the month. As I suggest, as I said, each one of those colors will be chosen each month. So for each month you'll get the classic Stampin' Pad, um, the Coordinating Ink Refill, the Coordinating Stampin' Blends Combo Pack. Oh, there you go. The Metallic Ribbon. Thank you, Amber. You do get a whole roll of the metallic ribbon, metallic woven ribbon in the coordinating color. And then in month one, you'll get the A4 pack of cardstock assortment. So that's the 20 sheets of the, the different colors. In month three, you'll get the in color six by six designer series paper assortment pack. That's the 40 sheets. Um, and then in month five, you'll get the in color matte decorative dots. That's these ones, the pretty ones and then also in month five you're going to get the in color glimmer paper pack which is here and i haven't opened um, i've used some of the pack these come in six by six um sizes and i've cut into these ones so these ones on the front aren't full size but yeah they come in all five colors and these are gorgeous and i did show them on a video um a couple of weeks ago and also in the fifth month, you're going to get an in-color video tutorial from me. So they're all the things that you get. Um, the in-color club costs $70 per month. And you're going to get all of those things I just listed in all of the colors. Um, and it runs for five consecutive months. Okay, so it's spreading out the cost of all those um, products for you to help you to be able to build your collection over the five months so there you go but yeah check it out we'll put the link up and um check that out all right thank you for correcting me amber because i told everyone the wrong thing <laughs> i am very excited i'm so excited new catalogs are so exciting and um i have got my list ready to place my order tomorrow when all of the products are available and um Yes, I had to whittle it down. My wish list is still long, but I had to whittle it down to my first order. And of course, the catalogue runs for 12 months, so I had to save some things to order later too. So, yeah. Um, hey, Julie, how are you going? Great to have you with us. All right. Uh, you didn't get the in-colour brochure? Uh, no, the in-colour brochure is... Oh, the in-colour brochure... Oh, the in color brochure is coming, Judy. It was just on Thursday or Friday that I posted out. It'll be you. It'll come in an A five um, 
envelope no an a5 c6 oh half of an a4 size what's that a5 yeah a5 envelope there's a large white a5 envelope coming to you and it's got the in color flyer in it it's got a special little um gift for you um it's got oh an information sheet um just explaining a little bit about the uh, catalog and stamp and rewards and things like that ordering and stuff like that um, there was a few different things I popped in there so it's still coming it's probably going to arrive either today or tomorrow and then there was a separate ordinary size envelope that I sent with the um, information about the joining offer because I got that um, the next day after I'd already packaged up the first envelope so there'll be two envelopes that are coming to you a standard size one and an A5 one so they should come in the next couple of days and you have all that information and that went out to all of my customers who were on my mailing list for catalogs. Um, so if you're not already on my mailing list for catalogs, my catalog mailing list, then please let me know that you would like to receive one so that I can pop you on my list and I can get all of that information and a brand new catalog out to you. All right. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm, I'm been drinking a ton of caffeine today or something, which I haven't. I haven't had anything except water and juice, orange juice. <laughs> Oh, no worries, Kimberly. Come back and watch the replay of the um the project. Sorry, we didn't get to it yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Have a good sleep, Kimberly. Um, all right. Oh, Judy said, I want all of that, but I'm broke again. Oh, no. That's okay. Um, oh, Dimity said, I better join again. <laughs> you already get the di the discount, Dimity, because you're already a, a um, Stampin' Up! demonstrator. But yes, if we weren't already demonstrators, we would be joining up right now, wouldn't we? Yes, yeah, so that amazing offer. <laughs> um, can you order from tomorrow? Yes, you can, Judy. Yes, the 3rd of May is when the catalogue launches. So um, that's when you can start ordering from the new catalogue. Um, Oh, Kat said, hello, Mandy. Sorry, I forgot to say hi. That's okay. <laughs> no worries. Alrighty. Okay. I'm going to cover up the camera. We're going to pop the camera down onto the desktop and we're going to get crafting because otherwise, and where did I put, oh, there it is. My little, my little, my little camera cover upper. -er. I was thinking, where did I put it? But we need to get crafting because otherwise we'll be here till midnight. And I love chatting with you. I'd be happy to stay here till mid, well, maybe not midnight, but I'd be happy to keep chatting. But let's keep chatting while we craft. All right, here we go. Bear with me. I'll get everything ready for you. Oops, did that just flip? Hang on a minute. I'm just going to take that back off. Okay, that didn't flip. Let me try again. Here we go. All right, flip, flip. That's better. I saw that flip that time. Had to just double check, otherwise we'd be upside down and back to front. Okay. All right, I'll just tighten up all these clamps so that everything stays put. Well, my camera stays put. I don't want that to fall down. Get that straight, hopefully. Lights. Adjust the lights. And, oh, where did I put all that DSP now? Oh, I dumped it over there. Um, let's see, let's move that down a little bit. Now I have a new host code today too, because it's May. Um, every month I have a brand new host code. So this is my May 2022 host code. So this will run for the entire month of May. So if you are shopping with me, be sure to use my host code. And I will send, uh, for orders over $50, I will send you a thank you gift. And um, I have a fantastic tutorial this month as well to send out as thank you gifts. Um, and so that will be available. And there are, oh, how many were there in this month? 35, 32, 30 something, I think, tutorials in a tutorial bundle, which is fantastic. Um, yes. So, all right. So let me show you what we are creating today. We are going to be creating this beautiful card using the beautiful in color products. So we're going to be using um, the cardstock, the inks. Um, we've got a new stamp set as well. Uh, we're going to be using the Stampin' Blends. Uh, we've got some of the Baker's Twine, some of the embellishments. And I've got cardstock here, but instead of these two cardstocks, I thought we might use some of the designer series paper or 
we could even use the blingy 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 glimmer paper so uh, let's I'm just gonna grab the designer series paper because I had that I dumped that over there with all of my um all of my notes actually I need to move my notes because there we go I need a bit of space okay so yeah so I thought maybe instead of the plain one there and that one there we might be able to use some of the incorporate some of the designer series paper so we're using that too so yeah all right so we're going to change it up a little bit today now I've got all the measurements for you and I'm going to show you how to cut all of the cardstock today because I thought you know what I never show people how to cut cardstock so for anybody who might be new to card making they might be a little bit stuck as to where to start because I always give the dimensions and things like that but if you're new to card making and you've never cut cardstock before um, that might be whoops hang on a minute wrong button there we go I'll just turn my iPad off for a minute because I feel like we are getting a little bit of lag I think there's a few too many devices running um, yeah, my husband's working from home too, so they, our internet's probably a bit drained. I'll just turn my iPad off for the moment. I can watch comments over on my computer. Um, yes, so I thought we're going to um, cut the cardstock together today. So I have got, here we go. So I've got some full sheets of cardstock. I'm going to show you how to cut a card base. So I've got some basic white cardstock. And I've got some basic black cardstock as well because we're going to use some strips of basic black cardstock. Um, but I'm going to show you how to cut a base and how to do the measurements of your pieces. Now I've got some off cuts here. These are off cuts from the 12 by 12 um, cardstock in the in color range because I was cutting down the 12 by 12 because it does come in 12 by 12 as well. It is available in 12 by 12. Here in Australia, we mostly use A4 unless you're a scrapbooker um, and you want to use a, the 12 by 12 for scrapbooking pages, which are fantastic. Um, but I bought the pack of 12 by 12 and I've been cutting them down into A4 pieces and these were the off cuts and I thought, oh, perfect, I'll use them today. Um, and I've got an additional piece of white um, in case we needed it as well. So, all right, so let's start with our card base and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to pop the card over out of the way whoops and you might think this one looks familiar I did show this one um, a couple of weeks ago I think when I was showing some of the other in color products and there was a couple of other cards I showed as well one of them which we made and did we make it or did I just show them no I think I just showed them so I'll show them again at the end as well in case you missed them the first time but yeah, this one I did already show, but I hadn't made it yet. All right, so I'm taking a piece of A4 cardstock. Okay, so this is a full piece of A4 cardstock. This is what we use here in Australia and in Europe. Um, Canada and America, they usually use the letter size, I, I think. Um, so your measurements will be a little bit different. So A4 cardstock, we're going to cut half a piece. We're going to cut this into half. All right, so we're going to use the measure along here. This is the Stampin' Up! trimmer. It's an amazing trimmer. You get a cutting blade and a scoring blade. So I'm just going to move the scoring blade up to the top out of the way. I'm going to move the cutting blade down to the bottom. So I'm going to use that as um, my cutting blade, uh, what I need to cut my cardstock. You've got measurements along the top here and you've got this little lip or this little edge along here which holds your cardstock in place and keeps it nice and straight when you're cutting. You've got inches and centimeters on this, um, this along the top. So I'm going to measure at 14.85, which is exactly half of an A4 piece of cardstock. Okay. So now we have two card bases. All right. So we're going to take this one card base. Now I'm going to move my cutting blade away. And this time I want to use my scoring blade. I'm going to turn it with the long edge along the top. I'm going to measure that at 10 and a half centimeters. So we're measuring from the cutting track. We're going across to 10 and a half centimeters. And I'm going to use my scoring blade now. I'm going to run that up and down a few times to score the cardstock, which means it's putting an indent into the cardstock, an indented line. And that forms our um, fold. That's where we're going to fold. 
So we want to flip it over. So we're using the, we're folding it on the side where the mountain is or where the card is um, pushed up along that line. And we're gonna fold it in half like that. Now, if you want to make sure that you get it folded nice and straight, you can use that little edge there again, push it up into that edge, and then you're gonna fold it like that. Now I like to take my bone folder and what we call burnish the fold edge there. Just rubbing that bone folder along there to push that crease down and give it a nice crisp fold. Okay. All right, so that's our card base ready to go. Then what I like to do is when I have, um, when I'm using my colors, usually what I do is I will cut them down into um, card front sizes. So if you have a look at this piece, this is the same size as the whole of that card front. That's kind of my working piece. That's the size that I like to cut my cardstock down to work from, okay? Um, and then I trim it down from there. So basically what we would do is, once we've cut it in half, let's do that with the black. So we'll do it again, measuring along the long edge at 14.85. So it's halfway between 14.8, halfway between and 14.9. We're gonna cut that with our dark cutting blade. Okay, so I'll set that one aside. I'll keep that for a card base in case I need a basic black card base for something else. But this piece, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna cut this in half the other way to create my card front. So again, I'm going to measure at 10.5 or 10 and a half. And instead of scoring this time, I'm gonna cut it. Okay, so now I've got two working pieces or two, two um, card front size pieces to work from. Oh, this one's actually dinted, I just noticed. I must have done that when I pulled it out of my um, paper stacker. So, okay, so that's how I work with my um, sizes. So we've got our base done. Now we need, with our basic black, we need a piece that is 14.85 long. So it's going to be the same length as the card front, okay? But we only want it 6.9 centimetres wide. So I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to measure my cardstock at 6.9. So I'm looking where 6.9 is here on my measure. 6.9, and I'm going to cut. Now you'll notice that I always cut away from myself up towards the top. That is because you've got that little edge along the top that's holding your cardstock. Um, sometimes if you go to pull the, the blade down towards you, you'll catch the cardstock and the cardstock will come away from the edge and then you won't get a straight cut. So that's just a little cutting tip for you. Also too, the blades can come out. So this is our piece that we need. I'll put that to the side. The blades can actually come out of the track if you're always cutting in one direction, sometimes your blade can get a little bit blunt in one section. So what you can do, if you come down here, there's a little notch in this arm, and you'll notice there's measurements on this arm too. I've got the metric one. It does come with the, uh, the inches measurement, but you can purchase the extra little arm um, to replace with the metric measurements, which is what I um, use. Um, so you come down to this little notch, and if you just jiggle your blade and take it out. So if you're finding that you're starting to get shaggy cuts, take your blade out and then just rotate it around the other way and then put it back in. Because what happens is if you're cutting, you've got two edges on your blade and I'm not sure if the camera will show that up. It's like a little um, triangle almost, the little blade on there. It's like a little triangle. So let's see if I can get that in the, the light. So if you're cutting just in one direction, one side of that blade can get blunt. But if you take it out of your track and rotate it around when you start to get shaggy edges when you're cutting, then um, the other side will still be sharp. Okay, so that's just a little tip for you. So just pop that back into the track. There we go. Also too, you've got an extension arm. So if you, need, if you are doing, um, say, a fancy fold card or if you're a scrapbooker and you need um, longer measurements or wider measurements, you have got the extension arm there and it goes right out to 40, 43.6 centimetres. So long, long measurements there. And then that just tucks away in there like that. Okay. So, all right. So we've got our black, we've got our white. 
Now we need our um, coloured strips and our in colour. We're going to make little rectangles. So we're going to cut these little rectangles now. Um, this piece is a spare, so we'll pop that over there. All right. So for our rectangles, we need them to be 2.95 centimetres wide. So just under three centimetres. And 6.5 centimetres uh, long. Uh, yes, tall. That's the word. <laughs> Sorry, no. 2.9 2.95 centimeters tall and 6.5 centimeters wide. Oh my goodness. Let me just cut them. All right, so 2.95. There we go. Now, because it's only a smaller measurement, I was holding the cardstock there. Did you notice me doing that when I put the arm down so that it wouldn't move? All right, and we'll cut our strip. There we go. And then now I'm going to cut the length, which is 6.5, which is a much easier measurement. There we go. Okay, so that now should be the right size. Now, the thing is, I was going to change that piece to um, designer series paper, actually. So I might, I'll just set that one aside for the moment. I'll do the other colors that are in the cardstock. So we need sweet sorbet. So we'll do the same. So I'm not cutting this entire piece to that width because I'm only cutting a small little rectangle and I might want to use this width for something else. So that's why I'm kind of doing it in this way. So again, 2.95, holding that. Holding your, as you're cutting, hold your um, cardstock or your arm down on your cardstock to keep that all nice and still and straight so that your blade doesn't wobble. And then we want 6.5, there we go. Okay, so we've got that one. Then we need Tahitian Tide, do the same again, 2.95, 6.5, that one, and we want Starry Sky. 2.95 by 6.5. Oh, I might cut the other edge. That one's got a little bit of a ding in it. There we go. 6.5. There we go. These little squares, actually, if you wanted to, you could keep them to make another card of another design. So, yeah, don't always throw out your um, scraps. Think about what else you could use them for. All right, and now I was going to replace... Oh, where did my little piece go? Oh, there it is. I was going to replace those the um, Parakeet Party and the Orchid Oasis with some of the designer series paper. So let's see. And the reason I wanted to use this was because this is what you get in the starter kit when you join during May. Which is super exciting so we need to work out which one is going to go well we don't want it to be too too busy i probably wouldn't use that one because we're going to be stamping flowers on these other ones so i'm thinking either yeah so either the lines or maybe the spots that one might be a bit too heavy too i think maybe spots i always love spots or the lines and we need that in starry, um, no, we need that in, wait, which one did I just pull out now? Oh, no, that's right. No, no, I pulled out starry sky, I think. I need, yes, I did. I need Orchid Oasis. I'm still getting used to all the names of my paint, my um, in colours. So forgive me if I say the wrong one, because it takes a little bit of time. I'm getting better. It takes a little bit of time to get your head around the um, the new colours and new products. All right, so which one do we like? I think the lines are nice because they're, they're kind of light. They've got a little bit of texture to them, but they're not too heavy. Yeah, I think I might use those ones. The spots might take away too much from the stamping on the, um, on the other DSP. 
Um, Amber said you can also cut small measurements with the part you are using sticking out the right side of the cutting track. Oh, yes, I didn't mention that. Thank you, Amber. I will show everybody that. So when you're cutting, we might do that with these ones. Which way do we want our lines to go? I think up and down or across? Hmm. See, across or up and down? I think maybe across. We might go across. So we need to cut it that way. Yes. So on your cutting track, uh, sorry, your um, measurements here on your cutting plate, the, you do have measurements on the right hand side as well that go up to 3.7 centimeters so if you are cutting smaller pieces you can use the measurements on that side as well um, so for this one I need 2.95 by 6.5 so if I which way did I want the lines to go across ways so I'm going to go I'll do it on this side this time. I'll measure it on this side. So I'll do 2.95 on that side. And that way it's giving me this large piece here to um, hold against the edge. Plus I can hold my hand on that cardstock more now too. So I've got more to hang on to on that side. So 2.95 and then 6.5. So this time I've got to do 6.5 on the left side. There we go. Yep. Nice. That'll be good. And then we'll save this piece for another project. All right, let's do that again. So we'll go, I'm measuring over on the right-hand side this time of the cutting track, 2.95. There we go. Amber just changed the blade for me yesterday and it's cutting like butter. It's cutting beautifully today and measuring at 6.5 there we go so there's our pieces all right so that's all our our um colors and now we're going to need a little bit of um basic white for cutting our die cutting our circle and also for cutting um stamping and die cutting our flower and leaves so i'm going to again cut this in half so i've got two card front pieces so these are my working size pieces and we will um, do our stamping on those and our die cutting all right so i think that's all of our cutting now so that's what we've got all right so now let's die cut um, our circle And these are a new um, die set in the new catalog. These are the stylish shape dies. Um, and I love these ones. They are, they kind of replaced the stitch shape dies that we had before, which had the squares, circles, and ovals. Now we've got squares, circles, and banners. Um, but these ones have got a finer, detailed, um, stitched design, and there's more. Um, shapes as well we've got uh, I keep forgetting I think it's six one two three four five six yep six circles five squares and four of the banners so we've already started using these ones um, we love these ones so I just I think it was this was it the second largest one or the largest might have been the largest oh no second largest one second largest circle we're going to be using today but yes these ones are a staple product I think if you don't already have um, if you've already got the stitch shape dies from when we had those, great. Um, but if you don't, then these are a staple to have in your um, die cutting kit because these ones are just fantastic. You can use them for so many different things. All right, so I'm going to use some of this to cut, um, to die cut this circle, but so that I don't run all of that cardstock through because my plates are a little bit chopped up and I don't want them to um, mark the rest of my cardstock. I'm just going to measure a little bit. So what have we got? Let's go, yep. So we'll go to seven and a half and I'll just cut that piece and we'll just die cut our circle out of that. All right. 
bringing in my lovely mini stamping stamp and cut and emboss machine oh by the way too if you're wanting a stamp and cut and emboss machine um from the from the third of may in the new catalog they are going up in price so if you were um, wanting one then today might be a good day to order one because after today they um, are going up in price so just a little uh a little mention there also to um there are some other things that are going up too in price cardstock will be going up designer series paper adhesives um, ink pads there'll be quite a few things that are increasing just a little bit because of um supply and global shipping crisis a lot of it really is to do with covid um yeah it's just pushing the prices up shipping is more expensive and all those sorts of things getting the raw material to make the products is more expensive and all of those things so yeah so if there was anything on your wish list especially any of those bigger items then um, yeah, get them now before they go up, if you can. If not, then feel free to wait for the new catalogue, um, but just know that you'll be paying just a little bit more. Alrighty, we might even be able to use that scrap for stamping our leaves on. We'll try and utilise our cardstock as much as possible. All right, so now we've got our circle for stamping our leaves, and we've still got that other little scrappy bit too from our other card front piece. Okay, so now we can start with our stamping and today we are using the brand new Happiness Abound stamp set. This is gorgeous. This is one from one of our new suites. Our Hughes, what's it called? Hughes in Happiness. Wait, what's it? Let me look it up. Let me look it up. I'll tell you the right name. Um, yes, Hughes of Happiness suite. This is the stamp set from um, that one. It also has coordinating dies, which we'll be using today as well, which are beautiful. These are the Blossoming Happiness dies. So these come in the suite. They can be purchased as a bundle and you'll save 10% purchasing them as a bundle or you can purchase them individually, but you'll end up paying full price. So if you're going to get the stamp set, I recommend getting the dies as well, purchase, purchasing them as the bundle use the bundle code there's a, a special bundle code you'll find it in the catalog and um, save yourself 10% but of course when you see this suite you're going to want the paper as well because the paper is gorgeous so yeah that's my little tip for you alrighty so today we're going to be using this little flower here we're going to be using these leaves and these leaves so just those three there and we've got lots of sentiments here so on this one we used a sentiment from a different stamp set and we um because we were creating this as a thank you card but for this one i think we're going to use one of the ones out of this stamp set um i like this one wishing you all the happiness you can imagine now let's see is that going to fit on that circle let's just check oh look i've got some extra little bits in here already um so I'll just check, is it that one? Yes, that's that one. Let's see how that's going to fit. Oh, that'll fit beautifully on there. And then we can still have the flower overlapping. Yep, I'm going to use that one. Wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. So that can be used for anything, kind of any occasion. There's also this one too, you are wonderful in every way. That's also another nice one that can be used for anything. All right, so we will do that. So I'm going to grab a block grab one of my d size blocks and i'll just pick up that stamp with my block i've got my flower already mounted and i need to get the leaves out i didn't get them out yet so we'll get some more blocks all right so if you don't have all of these blocks of course i've got lots of blocks because i do classes and facebook lives and things like that but just out just change out your blocks um, as you need to or if you have the stamparatus um, use the Stamparatus and you've got four stamping surfaces on the Stamparatus because it comes with two plates and they're double sided so you can just flip them over you can mount up your stamps on each of those sides um, you know what we might just stamp our flower and our leaves just on the one piece I think we'll get rid of that other one alrighty so move all of these other pieces to the side and I'll pop my card back up there pop all that over to the side and we're using photopolymer stamps so because we're using photopolymer stamps i always like to use my um, 
stamp and pierce mat which is a foam mat you can find this in the annual catalog under um, tools and um, this just gives you a bit of cushioning and give, helps you to get a better stamped image especially with your sentiments I like to cover mine with a bit of scrap paper or grid paper um, to keep it clean Alrighty. oh we've got to stamp our sentiment too we'll do that we're going to stamp our sentiment in um, memento tuxedo black and we're going to stamp our images in that color as well then we're going to be doing a bit of stamping with our in colors also now i haven't used this stamp before so whoops where's my chamois i better i better clean it on my chamois first when your stamps are new um especially with the photopolymer ones always give them a good clean first either on your chamois or with a little bit of stamp and mist and your um, stamp and scrub because they can carry a little bit of manufacturing oil on them and sometimes they can be a little bit greasy when you first get them so the ink doesn't like to stick to them really well so sometimes you might just need to ink them up a, a few times stamp them off just test it oh that's looking good already okay yeah, that's good. And these leaves have been used before, so and the flower has, so all good with those. All right, so let's re-ink. Now, with the um, memento, I like to go round and round and then tap, tap, tap. I just find that that helps the ink to adhere to the um, stamp a little bit better. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, excuse my puppy barking in the background. I think she's heard somebody out the front or something little Callie she's a little bit of a woofy head this one she's uh, quite noisy she's little but feisty <laughs> all right um, am I missing any comments let me just see here oh she's getting very loud I'm so sorry everyone if you can't hear me oh hi Glenda great to have you with us sorry I didn't see you jump on I haven't been checking the comments just going back to check the comments oh Megan um G's here too hey Megan great to have you with us um oh you've been awake since 4 a.m Megan my goodness yes you must be tired uh yeah you've been watching all of your um your football things over the weekend haven't you I saw your posts on Instagram ah oh, that's cool so exciting for you um oh you always cut the other way because you've got weak wrists oh okay so you cut with your trimmer on the side is that right oh cool yeah everyone does it differently but um, that's a good thing about our trimmer is it works in different ways for different people so it suits different needs which is awesome um oh the cockatoos are back that's what's setting Callie off again she saw them again oh thank you for letting me know Amber that's why she's barking Ah, oh, it must be the time of day. It's, yeah, the sun's just setting. It's dusk, so. Um, oh, you cut towards yourself. Oh, okay. All right, so you use the bottom edge of the trimmer, I'm imagining, because there is the, um, there's the little edge down the bottom here too, but this one only goes up to 12.3, um, the measurements along here. So if you're cutting shorter ones, shorter or narrower pieces that works too but you can use that edge as well and then cut towards yourself yeah yeah it's good isn't it that we can um do it in different ways all right so now let's stamp our flower oops nearly put my ink in the uh, my cardstock in the ink all right so rub 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 tap 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 and we'll just stamp um one flower we only need the one and then we're going to stamp our leaves rub 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 tap 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 so we want one of those and oh I didn't stamp that very well let me do that again I rocked my stamp that's better and then we'll do this double leaf here as well rub 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 tap 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 and we've got lots of nice cardstock there room enough to stamp all of those images so yeah so apart from our card base we just needed one additional card front piece card front size piece to get all of those extra pieces um, punched and we'll die cut those too. So just stamp off the excess from those flowers. Actually, have I used the right flower or not? Oh, I haven't. I've used the wrong flower. Hang on a minute. It's this one. Does it matter? Should we change it up? Let's change it up and use this one because can you see the difference on this one? I just realized I picked up the wrong stamp. On this one, I've got this flower. On this one I've stamped the other rose 
So let's go with this one this time. We're changing it up. Changing it up. We're changing up the DSP, so why not change up the stamps too? They're around about the same size, so it'll still work. All right, so let's give these a clean on our chamois. Love my Simply Chamois. It's a great cleaning tool and so easy to use. And then I always just stamp my stamps back off to make sure I got all the excess ink off. Yep. I gave this a, a rinse out um, before I started today to remove the excess ink. And um, so it's cleaning beautifully. Very easy to clean. All right. So now I'm going to keep that piece of um, scrap paper there because we're going to do a little bit of colouring. But before we get to our colouring, we're going to let our memento just dry a little bit first. Because if we started colouring with our Stampin' Blends while that ink was still wet, it's going to smudge it a little bit. So I want that to dry a little bit. And while that's drying, actually, let me bring back that Stampin' Pierce mat. Um, we're going to stamp on our plain cardstock pieces. So these three here. And we're going to stamp that rose in the coordinating colours. So we need starry sky um hang on a minute we need starry sky sweet sorbet and tahitian tide there we go all right so let's start with the sweet sorbet imagine how exciting it would be to join right now and get all of these products in your kit absolutely free That'd be so exciting. If I wasn't already a demonstrator, I would be joining up now. Well, not now. From the 3rd. From tomorrow. From the 3rd of May. Yeah. That special joining offer will be available from tomorrow. So just rotate your stamps and fill in all of those little edges. So we're just doing tone on tone. There we go. Just to add, we're, I think we're making our own designer series paper. All right, so just close up the sweet sorbet. Now, when you're using the sweet sorbet or any of the um, red colors or the deep pink colors, be sure to give your stamp a really, really good clean because um, the pigment in those inks seeps into the photopolymer. And you'll notice that my stamp will be a little bit um, stained, pinkish. Now I'm turning my chamois over to the clean side as well because I do I do have a clean side or a cleaner side and giving it a really good scrub on there to make sure I get rid of that as much pigment as possible out of that stamp. There we go. I don't want to transfer any of that red colour into my um, other colours. All right, so next I might do the starry sky next. Starry sky. And we're going to do the same thing again. So just ink that rows up and stamp it in different places doesn't have to be the same as how you stamped the last you can stamp it a little bit differently make them a little bit more interesting let's go down there like that there we go okay oh let's stamp a little bit over here there we go actually yeah no that's good all right so that's that one so we'll stamp the excess off this one and we'll give this a clean. Now it's turning purple because we had the red on there. Now we've got purple. Uh, there we go. I think we're back. I think we're back. Did you all lose me then for a moment? I think my um, internet on my phone was struggling then for a moment, but I think I'm back. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the... Uh, oh yes, Megan just said, is it just me or are you breaking up? Yeah, I just looked at my camera, Megan, and I was breaking up. It was freezing. I think my internet might be a little bit overloaded um, at the moment because we've got four, three other people at home at the moment, so they could all be on the internet too. And I've got two devices running, so am I all good now? Am I back? Um... <laughs> me I just read your comment Megan I thought Callie was telling you she wanted to say hello to us <laughs> no she was telling the uh, cockatoos to go away you're big and scary <laughs> uh, oh Megan said she loves the banner dies in the new stitch dies yeah they're gorgeous aren't they they're really lovely um you've got the stitch dies Megan yep so you're not sure that you'll be getting these banners these ones too yep yep 
Uh, the other thing to, yeah, as I said, if you've already got them, you've already got the old stitch dies, then um, you might not find that you would use these ones as much. However, these do have different sizes as well. They've got the really little ones as well. Um, and there's more of them and the banners too. So, but yeah, just whatever works for you. Uh, okay. Do, 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 am I back? Looks like you're working again now. Oh, thanks, Megan. Awesome. Yeah. Ah, oh, thanks, Helen. Fantastic. Okay, so I was just cleaning that. I just stopped for a moment when I realised that I had paused. I thought, oh, stop. Let's see, am I going to lose everyone or what? Um, so now I'm moving over to the Tahitian Tide and I will stamp my roses on my Tahitian Tide. Uh, let's start down the bottom this time. There we go. And a little bit up here. Beautiful. So, everyone who has seen the in colours, tell me which is your favourite colour of the new in colours? Which one do you love? I would love to know. What's your favourite? They're all so beautiful and they coordinate so beautifully together too. All right, so we've finished all of our stamping now. All right, good. So we've got those ones ready to go. So they're going to go like that. Well, they'll be neater than that. They'll be lined up. So we'll keep our scrap piece of paper out. Um, Megan said, yeah, I'll still probably get them just for the banners <laughs> and to have a spare set. Yeah, and you might find the stitching on them is actually finer and um, I really like it. So, so this is the stitching on it. I'm not sure how the camera will let me move the light over a bit. Um, but the stitching is more sort of like a, um, a needle prick all the way around. Whereas the old stitch shape dies, um, they had like a long stitch. So this is more like a, like the needle's just gone up and down. Yeah. So it is, it is a little bit different and it's more delicate. So you'll notice the difference when you get them. Okay, um, Megan said the two blues and the green. The green is very close to the Seahawks action green of their jersey. Ah, that's cool. Uh, will be very helpful for the scrapbook of my LA Seattle trip. Oh, yes, definitely, Megan. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we are going to colour our flower and our leaves and then we're going to um, cut them out, die cut them out. So I have got here the blends oops hang on a sec let me just move this over to this side I've got all of my stamp and blends all lined up here to show you because these are going to be included in my in color club as well so here's all of the the um the dies in fact let me just pause there for a sec and uh, find do, 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 do. Um, there we go. Here's my In Colour Club uh, I can reach today. So I'm going to pop my In Colour Club link down in the comments there. There you go. So if you're interested in checking out my In Colour Club and what is on offer in my In Colour Club, I've just put that in the comments. I will also add it to... Um, the description of this video as well so in it's in the comments here on Facebook um, but over on YouTube and also on Facebook I'll put the link in the description as well um, my paper share as well I'll do that now too while I'm here there we go there's my paper share and what else have I got what other links have I got um, oh an annual catalog request form Yep, if you're not yet um, working with a demonstrator and you'd like a customer, uh, you'd like a customer, you'd like to be my customer and you'd like a catalogue, there's the link there for a catalogue. And what else do I have? Let's see. Hmm. I do have actually a link to... Let me just double check this one. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me just check this one. Is this the one? Yep, 
yeah no okay all right so that's that's it yeah okay so there you go so you've got my annual catalog request my paper share and my in color club so if you're interested in any of those and actually let me put while i'm there while i'm there while i'm there let me add in a one more link and then we'll get back to our card my joining link if you are interested in joining my team and getting all of those beautiful new in color products there we go as freebies in your kit in your starter kit and not only that but becoming part of our awesome paper craft gems um, crafting community so my team is called the paper craft gems and we have such a beautiful team um, such a beautiful crafting community everybody's so lovely and um, we just love it we love spending time together and we have lots of fun so yeah if you'd like to come and join us you're very welcome we'd love to have you Alrighty, so these are all the beautiful um, stamp and blends in the new in colors so they come in a color combo in each color you get the light and the dark so I won't go through all the colors because I've said them so many times already today you already you probably already know which ones which all right, so we are going to color our flower with um, sweet sorbet and then the leaves we're going to do with the parakeet party and the blues we're not using today. So we'll just pop those over to the side. All right, let's start with the dark. Ooh. Now, if you haven't seen our Stampin' Blends before, they are um, alcohol-based markers. Um, they blend to be together beautifully so that you can get shadow, tone. You can blend different colors together as well. Um, and they're just gorgeous to work with. So you have a bullet tip and you have a uh, brush tip. Okay, so bullet tip is great for doing um, finer work. So I like to use the bullet tip when I'm doing sort of like the, the deeper um, shadowy parts. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, just a little bit of dark here and there. And look, I'm no coloring expert i'm not an artist i don't have an art degree but these just make your coloring look so beautiful and professional without being a professional that i just love what you can do with these they're gorgeous they're very very easy to work with all right so we'll just add some dark there kind of where you would think the shadows would be or where you would think it would be a little bit deeper okay then we can take our light and this time I'm going to use my brush tip it's my favorite and I'm just simply going to color the whole flower and where I've done those darker bits I am just going to go over that a little bit more to blend that down a little bit into the lighter color so we still got the depth but you don't have like harsh streaky lines and this one's really lovely to work with because it's brand new it's only been used once before, once or twice before. And um, so the brush tip is still beautiful and firm. When you use them and use them and use them and use them and use them, um, some particular colors that I have, the brush has become a bit soft and, um, what do you call it, like feathery, because I've used it so many times. Um, so some of them I've had to replace over time, but I'm using them all the time too, don't forget. So and preparing classes. Oh, I have another class coming up too, um, which I advertised the other day. Um, and I'll be advertising another one again, I think next week too. Um, so keep an eye on my events because I always have classes and I've introduced a third class now, which is actually just um, a, a cards and cuppa afternoon. Um, based around our kits so it's really it's really an easy class um, and in fact you can use whichever kit you want I'm not teaching as such we are just gathering with the kits and enjoying um, time together so if you would like to join us you can purchase a um, one of our kits from our kits collection from my online store um, you can do that through my blog. Go to mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com and click on the um, shop link there at the top of my blog page. And um, yeah, come and join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the event is in my event page uh, and you will find a link there to um, 
my online store to purchase my kit, uh, a kit so that you can come and join us. Um, you do need to purchase a kit from my online store to be able to attend. Um, unless you're one of my team members, if you are one of my team members, um, you can purchase a kit yourself and still be able to come along. So there we go. So we've got a nice deep rose this time. Okay, alrighty. So let's work on our leaves. Uh, I'm not using that one. I'm using these two up here. So I'll do the same again. I'll use my dark first. And I'm just going to do the dark along the edge here. Now the trick is too when you're working with blends because you you want the um, colors to blend together or the the tones to blend together only work on a small section at a time because they are alcohol markers they do dry very quickly and you want that first color that you laid down to still be wet to be able to blend it in nicely to your second color because if that dries um, it won't blend in nicely so just work on small sections at a time there we go. So we've got the nice tone in there. And we'll do the little leaves as well. It's just going to turn it around this way to make it easier for me to work with. So do we have some favourite colours? Let's see. Did I miss that? I'll just scroll up. Do, 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 do. Oh, Megan said, yeah, Megan said she likes the blues and um, the green which I'm using right now. Uh, anybody else comment on the colours? Which are your favourite in colours? I don't think I can see any other comments there. Um, Megan said, I just joined the paper share, so we'll have to see if the budget can stretch for this Mandy. When do I need to know? Oh, no worries, Megan. If you're already part of a paper share, that's okay. That's all right. No problem. Um the RSVP for the paper share. So the RSVP for the paper share is this Friday, the 6th. Yep. Um, would love to be in the kit class. Ah, oh, awesome. I saw the robots are available finally. Yes, they are. We need to get that for your godson's birthday in July. Yes, it's a really cute kit. Great for kids. Yep. Yep, no worries. All right. Um, yeah, so as I said, if you would like to come and join me for our Cards and Cuppa afternoon, it's going to be on the 21st of May at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we'll probably go for about two hours. And we're just going to have a lovely time together creating our kits together. Um, I will have the instructions of all of the kits. So if we don't have the same kits or we're not working on the same kits, that's okay. If you get stuck and you need help, I'll have all of the instructions there so that I'm familiar with um, each of the kits and I can help you along the way. And I can help you with tips for stamping and things like that if you need them. Or if you are already an avid crafter and you want to come along um, with your kit and just enjoy a cuppa and a chat with us, that would be fantastic too. We would love to have you. It's going to be fun. It's going to be very chilled, very relaxed. Alrighty, so there we've got everything all coloured in. We are ready to do our die cutting. And this is why I have scrap paper underneath me all the time when I use Stampin' Blends because they will bleed through your cardstock. Now I've just, I normally, um, when I'm using Stampin' Blends, I'll normally use thick um, basic white, but I actually just use the standard today because I already had that out and that's what I was using for everything else. So... Um, you just have to be mindful that it will absorb through more. So make sure you protect your work surface. Okay. Um, oh, the 21st of May is election day. Okay. All right. Well, it's on Zoom. Um, so it's not an in-person thing. So hopefully being that it's on Zoom will make it a bit more available to people if they do need to go and do their voting and things like that. They could do it before or after. But thank you for alerting me to that, Megan, because I wasn't aware of the date. I knew the elections were coming up, but I didn't know the date. Uh, but that's okay, because it's only for two hours from two till four. So um, I think the polling booths are usually open fairly early in the morning and they open till late. So, yeah. Anyway, see how you go. Oh, Dimity said she likes the 
green, so she likes a parakeet party. The um, soft sorbet and the uh, orchid oasis. Yes, they're really beautiful. Yeah, they're really lovely colours, aren't they? Very pretty. All right, so now we're just going to place our dies around our stamped images that we've just finished colouring. Um, we'll tape them down with our washi tape because we don't have our magnetic platforms yet, but they're coming. Actually, the magnetic platform that's coming for the mini has got, I just noticed um, on the weekend when I was looking closely at them, they've got a, um, like a, oh, what do they call it? Like a stabilizing plate beneath it. Like the magnet plate is sort of embedded into uh, it looked like one of these white plates or something to keep it stable because it's smaller, I guess, to avoid any um, warping. So that'll be cool. The big one is, um, and both of them, I think, are self-healing. They're going to be self-healing mats as well. So you'll cut straight onto the um, magnetic plate, which will be great. Be really good. Be so good to have magnetic plates back again. We won't have to keep using all this washi tape all the time. And it'll be much quicker too. We'll be able to just whack our dies, whack our dies on top of our stamped images and away we go. <laughs> oh, you meant for the in colour club, Megan. You're interested in the in colour club. Oh, okay, no worries. Yeah, well just let me know. Um, check out, click on the link when when my video finishes today, click on the link and um check it out just so you know what's included, how much it is, and how I run it. And then, um, yeah, and then just make the decision from there if if you would like to do that. That would be fantastic. Yep. Um, alrighty. Okay, so we'll just remove those dies. I haven't put these ones on magnetic sheets yet. Of all of my new dies I've received, I've only put one set onto magnetic sheets so far. Been so busy planning, planning, planning all the, my events coming up and lots of other things, getting catalogs out and catalog information out and all the things that I haven't had a chance to sit and do all of my magnet sheets yet. Whoops. But I will. I'll get to it. Just take, everything takes time. <laughs> there we go. All right, I'll pop them back in there for the moment. Okay. So that's all of our pieces. I think we're ready to put this together. And we're going to use some twine. We might even change up the colour of our twine today. We'll see. Alrighty. So here's all of our pieces and our twine. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add all of these pieces onto our um, basic black piece. So I need a, let me grab my silicon craft sheet, which needs a wash. I had it sitting up on my shelf um, to let the last lot of glue dry on it that I after me using it and um, promptly left it up there and forgot that I needed to actually take it and wash it but that's okay so I'm just going to lay these all down I'll do them one at a time we'll start at the top I'm going to use my actually I might put these off to the side so I don't get excess glue on them and that's the order that we're going to be adhering them down in Oopsie. Okay, so let's make sure we go. Oh no, what have I done? Ah, I haven't cut them to the right width. Uh oh. Oh dear. What did I do? Oh yes, I did. I lined it up on the edge. That's what I did wrong. Don't line it up on the edge. It's meant to have a border. Okay, I'm going to turn that over. <laughs> All right. Oh, I thought, oh, my goodness, I was losing myself there. I was aligning it to the edge, and it's not supposed to be aligned to the edge. It's supposed to be a border. It's supposed to be in the middle. But that's okay. I'll put that down onto my silicon craft sheet. Lucky I had my silicon craft sheet out because I can flip that over onto there, and I'll be able to lift it back off because glue doesn't stick to the silicon craft sheet. So, oh, my goodness, silly, silly. Yes, we want to adhere it down with a border. Pay attention. <laughs> so... 
it goes all the way to the top but we want a little border on the left and the right so we're just having borders run down the sides okay now let me make sure I got that right along the edge now because otherwise they're not all going to fit on I'll just push that down to the edge it's a bit sticky now because it already had glue on it okay hopefully that's aligned all right oh rescued <gasps> lucky I was thinking oh my goodness did I cut them wrong no I gave you the right measurements it's all good it's just me it's just me making a little boo-boo but all good we rescued it all right so we're going to butt all of these up against each other so no gap in between and we just follow that border down the edge there so going sweet sorbet parakeet party tahitian tide see i'm teaching myself the colors still if i keep saying it often enough it'll get in my head and i'll remember them so there we go love these new colors they're so beautiful even the best uh, even the best sometimes make boo-boos oh for sure megan nobody is perfect we all make mistakes yep definitely <laughs> all righty so go down with the orchid oasis i had to think about it then for a moment and starry sky is the last one starry sky i think is easy to remember because it's like the night sky it is like the night like a starry sky so there we go i might turn this one up the other way yeah let's turn it up that way have the flowers in a different position slightly there we go okay okay i haven't quite got that right still that's still not the right i've still ended up with a little bit of excess i don't know what i've done with those measurements I've got a little bit of excess black at the bottom there. Let's see. Why? My measurements must have been off on one of them. Don't know. That's okay. I mustn't have lined up one of them quite right because that one is a little bit, we've got a little bit of a black border at the bottom. But you know what? I think once we stick it on, it's not going to be super noticeable. I'm not going to worry about it. I was thinking, will I trim it? Won't I trim it? Nah, I'm just going to leave it. I mustn't have measured properly one of those pieces. It's just like a half a millimeter out. All right, so let's now add... Ah, you know what I didn't do? Gee, I'm jumping ahead of myself today. <laughs> okay. I didn't add the twine, did I? I forgot the twine. Oh, I need to breathe. Breathe, Mandy, breathe. Take your time. <laughs> oh, you'd break up the blues, would you, Megan? Yeah, you could. You could put them in a different order. That would look good too. I did them in this order because this is pretty much the order that um, Stampin' Up! has been showing all the colours in, the in colours. So I kind of kept with the same, um, yeah, this same sort of colour. Um, what do you call it palette as what Stampin Up have been showing everywhere so that's okay I've got my silicon craft sheet so it's all good I can still put that down and it's still going to be okay so on the first card we had um, Tahitian Tide but I was thinking should I change it up but I'm just thinking because the flower is the sweet sorbet it might be too much too much red might be nice to still introduce another color because we've got the sweet sorbet and we've got the parakeet party for the leaves and they're going to be down towards the bottom on the circle but then and we've got the deep blues down there so yeah i might just go with the same color actually i might just do that let's just do that all right so we're going to wrap that around twice one two bring that back up i'm just doing that straight off the roll so i haven't measured that and i'm just going to allow myself oops stay on the silicon craft sheet because you've got glue on the back i'll measure about there ish 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 
Okay, and we'll tie a bow. So it's got all that stickiness on there. I'll leave that there while I just tie my bow here. We'll crisscross those over. We'll tie a bow over this side. We'll tie that bow down on the, um, the parakeet party there. We can slide that around a little bit in a minute. Let's tie a little bow. Oh, I can hear my puppy growling. She's trying to get somebody's attention, I'd say. Probably wants to play. Oh, there we go. All right. Or maybe she is playing. Sometimes she growls when she's playing. Does anybody else's dog growl when they're playing? She gets so excited and she gets all growly, but it's not a vicious growl. It's a playful growl. You know when she's got a vicious growl. She's like... All right, we've got a sideways bow on this one, but you know what? We're going to go with it because I just realized what the time was. So we're going to leave it as a sideways bow. We will trim up the ends. On the other one, I had a lovely bow sitting the right way. But this one is going to be a sideways bow. That's okay. I don't mind a sideways bow, actually. All right, so let me just fix up this twine so that it's crisscrossed over. And I'll just get that positioned where I want it before I go ahead and glue the whole thing down. All right, there we go. That's about right. And that bow, I think that bow can go up just a little bit more. No, nope, I think it's stuck to the glue. That's okay. All right, let's glue this again. Goodness me. All right. So lots more glue. I hope I got it right this time. Some glue on this side of the twine. Let's put a bit of glue on the twine too so that twine part sticks to the card as well. We don't want the card sort of sitting up just there. There we go. All right, and now we'll pop that down on our card base. Just in about a centimetre or so from the edge, thereabouts doesn't have to be exact. Let's get that lined up nice and straight top to bottom. And once we've made sure that we've got that lined up top to bottom and straight, we'll give that a firm press down. Pressing down the cardstock either side of that twine as well to make sure that it sits down there. We don't want it poking up where the twine is. There we go, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'd say my measurements was half a mil off on one of those pieces when I've cut them because I've just got a tiny little bit of black at the bottom. But you know what? When you stand that card up, you can't even tell. So, shh, don't tell anyone. Nobody else will know except you and me. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so I'm going to um, get some dimensionals out and I better close that up for the moment. Whoopsie. And we'll put some dimensionals onto the back of our... Oh, actually, before I do that, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dauber a bit of ink around my um, sentiment label. And I'm just going to grab my Memento Tuxedo Black dauber out of my little holder there. There we go. And we'll just put a little bit of ink around the edges there just to give it a little bit of a border. I like to do that with my sentiment labels. It just makes it stand out. It looks like it's got another color behind it, but it's, it's actually a cheat's way of layering um, your, your sentiment labels because it looks like you've got another color behind it but you actually don't just helps to highlight it a little bit all right there we go all right so now we want some dimensionals onto the back of that one and I'm going to be starting a brand new sheet of dimensionals very soon because this one is nearly finished I'll use up some of these edge pieces too all right so we'll remove those backings There we go. Oh, no. You know what I just did? I stuck that down in that glue. 
that was from the back of that. There was still glue on there. Doll. Oh, no. I wonder if I can get that off with my eraser. My glue eraser. Hang on a minute. Otherwise, I'm going to have to create another label. Oh, that's so annoying. I can't believe I just did that. I forgot about it. Oh, I might have got it off with my glue eraser. These glue erasers are awesome. You can find them online. Um, Stampin' Up! used to sell them, but they don't sell them anymore. Oh, I got it off. Yay. <gasps> wow. Today I'm showing you lots of tips of how to fix boo-boos. <laughs> ah, yes, it does take the sharp white edges off too, Megan, when you add that, um, that daubered ink around the edge. All right. Okay. We have rescued that one. So all good. I'm going to pop this up around about um, here. Make sure that my sentiment is nice and straight. And I'm going to have that going off the edge there like that. Okay, good. Now with the leaves, um, you can adhere the leaves to the flower. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to adhere the large larger leaves to my flower and then with the smaller leaves I'm going to adhere them flat so we're going to mount up our flower so I'm just adding a little bit of glue to the tip of the um, leaves there and let's work out the angle we want our flower like that so I'll have these coming up here like that okay then I won't put that back down in that glue I nearly did it again go over here Yes, and we'll pop some um, dimensionals onto the back of here. I'm going to pop this one up. Oh, in fact, you know what? We're going to have this, let's see. Yeah, so we want our dimensionals not right down near the bottom. We want them more up towards the top because it's going to be going off um, the edge of the card. So we don't want to put dimensionals too close to where that's going to be hanging off the edge. There we go. It might just pop a little, a little piece of dimensional. Look, I've got a little corner piece here on this leaf here. And the other leaf we won't pop one on because it's going to hang over the edge. Yep, so that'll go there like that. And I'm just going to place that gently there. Well, let's make sure that we're not covering up the words. I'll just place that gently to make sure that I'm going to be able to slip this one under. So I'm going to stick that flat. Yep, that'll be perfect. All right. So I'll just put a little bit of glue on the back of these leaves. I'm going to adhere these ones down flat. And I'm going to tuck them underneath that one there like that. There we go. And we can push that on tightly now. I just wanted to make sure I had that in the right spot. Okay. Oh, phew. Now, I'll leave this out so I can wash this today. All right, now we need to add our bling. These are the beautiful in color um, matte decorative dots. So the 2022 to 2024 in color, I'll hold them up a little bit. 2022 to 2024 in color matte decorative dots. It's a bit of a mouthful, but they come in the um, five in colors and you'll notice that they're in an ombre color. So you've got darker ones and lighter ones in, the, in each of the five in colors which is really beautiful. So we'll use some of the, we'll tie in the ribbon color. So we'll use some of these ones. Um, let's go with this color. So we'll pop, might pop one here and then we'll grab a small one as well. And we'll pop that down there. There we go. I normally put three, but I just had two on the first one. What if I grabbed a lighter one? What if I put a light one over here? Whoopsie. Whoops. Let's pick that up. There we go. It's having trouble picking that up then. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a bit light, actually, next to that other darker blue. Let's grab this one. Let's put that one there. There we go. Okay, we are done. Done, done, done. So if you like, oh, I like to always um, separate the ends of my twine when I'm working with Baker's Twine just for add a added bit of texture. I don't like them to be blunt on the ends, but that's just an extra step. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
there we go so we've got a sideways bow this time if you want to you can pop a little glue dot underneath your bow um, I normally do that but I'll worry about that bit later that glue wants to keep there we go I just needed to press that a little bit harder okay all right so there we go so that's the um, one I made today that's the first one so just a little bit different just changed it up slightly um, <laughs> Megan says the glue eraser is one of her most used items in her um, in your lit ba kit bag is that what you meant in your kit bag cool <laughs> oh Julie says I love this layout I'm gonna case it if that's okay yes of course Julie go ahead and enjoy um, yeah um, I'm just scrolling back on comments um, do, 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 do the twine oh yeah I could have I didn't see your comment till now Amber Amber said I could have wrapped the twine around the entire card because I already put the glue on I could have um, yeah I could have done that I should have probably done that actually it would have saved me mucking around with that extra glue but that's okay it worked out okay in the end all good um, oh yes Shelly and Sarah they do make boo-boos on on stage don't they Megan that's hilarious when they craft together it's so fun yeah Alrighty, so there you go. So there's two different variations of the same card. I think I am going to have to whack a bit of extra glue or tape or something under there because that keeps on wanting to lift up. The other side's okay. It's just that side of the twine. That's okay. I'll fix that later. Um, but yeah, so two variations of the same card, just using the different stamps, different sentiment, and we just included some of that beautiful designer series paper in there as well. So there you go. So just remember about that fantastic joining offer starting tomorrow, the 3rd of May. Here's the flyer again, and you'll get all of those beautiful um, in-colour products. You'll get all of the stamp pads. So you get five stamp pads, a full pack of A4 um, cardstock in the five colours, a full pack of the designer series paper, and you'll get some grid paper as well, the special in-colour grid paper, which we haven't actually seen yet. We've only seen one page of that, so I don't know what the other ones all look like. I'm guessing that there's, I'm not sure how many is in the pack of that, um, but we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. So anyway, so okay, let me flip the camera back up so I can say goodbye to you all face to face and let you get on to your evening because it's almost dinner time for a lot of you, I know. So, all right, bear with me for one moment and I'll do a flippity flip. Here we go. All right. Just adjust my camera. And we'll go flip and flip. There we go. Oh, I'm up in the sky and I'm dark because I haven't got the lights on. Let me just adjust my lights. There we go. Makes a difference, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh, I've probably got the camera a bit crooked now too. There we go. All righty. Oh, well, that was Mammoth. But we had a lovely chat at the beginning, didn't we? That was fun. Always lovely to chat with you all. So there you go. So there's my card I made today. Let's hold up the other one as well. We'll hold up both of them so you can see the two different ones. So, oops, there you go. So there's two different options there of the same card. So enjoy. Feel free to case enjoy that i gave you all the measurements i just just make sure that you check your measurements before you cut unlike me because i was half a mil out so <laughs> oh, i've been doing that a lot lately actually um there was two other projects i made just recently as well and i was like a millimeter out and it made all the difference one of them was my um uh infinity card and you can't be wrong on your measurements with those because then it doesn't work properly <laughs> so i had to hand trim it all <laughs> so yeah Anyway, so there you go. So I hope that you enjoyed those. And I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration using those beautiful new products, the In Colors and the gorgeous um, Happiness Abounds bundle. There's the beautiful stamp set and you've got the coordinating dies. Actually, one thing I didn't show you with the dies too was, let me just pull them back out again, 
with the dies so you not only have the dies that cut out all of the um, stamped images hopefully they don't fall off the sheet I think I've stuck them back on all right so you, you can cut out all of those stamped images but then you've also got this one that creates a, um, a beautiful um, leafy cut out background and then you've got these two here which are little borders that make like a little um, notepad like you've like you've um, using notepad paper and this one with the circles looks like you've actually torn it out of a notepad it's really cool I'll show you oh actually I've got two other projects to show you I forgot now you might have seen these if you were watching me a couple of weeks ago I shared them as well when I was I think it was when I did the um, unboxing of all the new products but this was one of the cards and this one uses that die see how it looks like note paper isn't that just so cute so that was one of them and this was the other one whoopsie that one too isn't that pretty yeah so you might not have seen them and then I also use the in colors um, was it last week as well yes last week to make the teacup um, slimline card as well did you see that one that was really cool so I've been having a lot of fun with these new in colors making lots of beautiful things so there you go um, where is the thank you sentiment from oh this one Julie this one um, good question I can't remember I might have to get back to you on that one um, mm, I'll get back to you <laughs> sorry I can't remember off the top of my head now because it's not it's not in the stamp set that we were using today and I can't remember which stamp set it was I'll find out um, I'll check in on that and I'll let you know um, you love those dies, Megan? Yeah, not sure. To, not sure about the stamp set though. Um, yeah, I think I like even just the sentiments. The sentiments on this stamp set and the fonts are beautiful. So even if you're not sure about the imagery, yeah, I don't know. Each to their own, I think. Everybody has different tastes, different things that they like. Um, yeah, I really love it though. And I, yeah, I can't wait to do more with that little um, notebook die. I think that one's going to get a fair bit of use this year. Uh, oh, thank you, Megan. Megan L says, lovely card, man. Mandy, thanks for sharing. Have a great week. Thank you, Megan. You too. I hope you have a lovely week. Um, Helen says, great cards, Mandy. I have dinner. I had dinner while we watching. Oh, good. We are two hours ahead of you. Oh, yes. Of course you are. Yes, I always forget. I always forget about the different time zones. Yeah, a bit like geography. I'm bad with time, bad with um, geography, <laughs> bad with history too. Not real good at history either. <laughs> uh, Megan G said, "I had a huge lunch with my mother, so I'm off to bed." Ah, yes, because you had a big weekend as well, and you've been up since early today. Yeah, well, have a beautiful sleep. I hope you have a great week. Um, bye Dimity, thanks for being with us. Great to have you. Glenda says great card. Thank you, Glenda. Um, and I think I have caught up with all oh, there you go. Amber has remembered which stamp set it was, Julie. It's the good feeling stamp set. There you go. Thank you, Amber. She's got such a good memory, that girl. Whenever I forget anything, I go to Amber and I ask her. She remembers everything. Pretty much. Pretty much everything. She's amazing. <laughs> for me if I don't write it down it's in in one ear and out the other yeah <laughs> all righty um oh thanks Megan you're welcome take care and have a great crafty week thank you yeah uh Megan L says you're good at card making so that is all that counts oh that I don't remember stuff yes <laughs> so long as I remember how to put a card together it's all good <laughs> all right well I will let you all go thank you so much all for being with me today it's been fun today um thank you so much for lifting my spirits I've had some bad news this past week so it's been really great to be with you today and um just have my spirits lifted a little bit and enjoy some um creative time and put all of the sad sad bad stuff um away for a little bit so 
Um, thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. So have a great week, everyone. I'll be back live again next Monday at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So I look forward to seeing you all again then, if not sooner, somewhere on social media. And remember, if you're not already following me on um, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, where else, else am I? Instagram. Uh, have I missed anything? I feel like I've missed something. Yeah, before this be sure to be following me in all of those places and uh, keep up with uh, what's happening. All right. Oh, and remember to subscribe to my newsletter as well. And if you have any questions about anything else, if you would like more information about the joining offer or have any questions, feel free to ask me. There is no pressure. Um, asking questions is good. I like to have all the information about things before I make decisions. Um, so I'm happy to answer any of your questions and there's absolutely no pressure just because you ask a question doesn't mean that you are committing to anything. All right, so I'll leave that with you. Have a great week. It's going to be an exciting week. New catalogue tomorrow. Yay! All right, take care, everyone. Happy stamping. Oh, no, happy crafting. That's what I say, isn't it? Happy crafting. Happy both. <laughs> Bye.